a mismatch. I don't know what the effect of that would be. Once I create the user, under the directory users, RSB service entry appears. And then there I have a folder called known hosts. This will eventually hold in it keys of trusted entities. I'll get to this later on. I don't know whether this step is necessary, uh, but I logged in as RSB service just in case a folder or some setting in Windows needs to be done. Again, I would like confirmation whether this step is necessary or not. My server is ready and I'm swapping to my client. Again, if you look at the lower uh, right hand side of the screen, you see that the machine name is called RSync Line and here I'm running Windows XP. This time I'm installing RSync for client, accepting all the defaults. And it's a very simple installation. Under program files I get the default, the default files that came with the installation. Now I would like to create a folder called .ssh but as you can see Windows does not allow me. Now this is not necessary for rising but since um, CYG Win, Line, Unix uh, likes a directory called .ssh I'm going to create one. Now, in order to overcome Windows limitation, what I do, I create a folder with a name and then rename it to .ssh. And as you can see, that problem can be overcome fairly easy. In .ssh, I'm going to place the keys, private and public keys, security keys of the client. Now, in order to do that, first thing I'm going to do is add a path to the command that allows me to generate a private and public key. Basically it says I want it to be of type RSA, 2048 bits, no passphrase. As you can see, two files were created. The one without an extension is my private key and that should never be shared or given to anyone. My public key on the other hand must be given to anyone I would like to establish a secure communication with and in this case this is the server. So I go into this file and since mine are on same environment I'm going to copy it if you recall in authorized keys of RSB service. I just paste it there and save the file. No need in this case to restart any services. Back to the client. I'm now going to start the first of a number of mm, command files to test out whether everything is okay. The first file, the first script I'm going to run just establishes a secure tunnel with the server. The top part are a number of paths, the most important being the one that says home. Home points to where the keys .ssh will be placed. In this command what I have is ssh dash vvv means very 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 verbose. So as you see, the moment I type the command, I'm going to get a lot of what is happening. If you reduce the number of Vs or leave them out, um, most of the stuff you see here won't appear. Basically, I connected to the machine. I was asked whether I want to trust this user, and I said yes. And here I'm connected. Basically, by typing um, help, I could get a list of commands. In my case, I just want to exit. So basically, I have established communication with uh, rsync server. Nothing transferred, but it works. Script, you see here, can be 
um, download it. My next script is similar to the one I had before, but this time I'm going to transfer a file. Similar top, I'm going to back up uh, the folder docs, which contains a few HTML files, to the IP address of my machine, and if you notice, there are two colons after the IP. Two colons means make use of a module. So it's going to make use of the module I defined earlier called top. And if you look in the top uh, left hand corner, you see a miniature window on the server, that module uh, showing. Saving the file. What I basically have is source, destination. Source being program files, rsync documents. Here I'm executing the command. For information of uh, on rsync or any of the commands, the docs I'm just cop I'm copying now contains a lot of information. So, switching back to the server, at this end I should have my files. Let's go and check. There is my folder. Now, this is one problem I have not yet managed uh, to solve with this new version of Rsync. Although the files do get copied, when copied, the only u three users defined are everyone, none, and the service account itself. Yet no one has any rights to them. Now I don't know whether this is intentional, but uh, it would be 